As you get older, your mind goes, oh, I can totally do that. And your body goes, nope, nope, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna try it. Uh, yeah. Don't jump over the table. Why? You have to. Okay, you have the head first clear your nipples. Effects to do, guys. I said this yesterday. Lots of effects to do. Don't jump over it. I'm pretty sure I can do this. I did it. I did it back in 2013. Actually, no. I'm. I'm 100% sure I can do this. You're gonna dive over it. You're gonna dive. Over Oh, I think I cracked my shoulder. Oh. Ow. Oh my god, dude. Oh, take Oh, let's that's see. not good, dude. Here, let's see if there's like a cut or a bruise. No, no, it, it's like f***ed up. It's like yeah. Oh, dude. Oh no. <laughs> you like my kicked on the ground. Dude, I heard a crack. Yeah, was, that, was that was that the floor? That's my collarbone. Dude, oh my god! Well, dude. that's what happens when you try to go 100%. Uh, I, I saw what you did. You hit the ground like it was a bounce board at a, like a gymnasium. Oh my god, I can't believe that. I warned him. First off, respect. Secondly, did you break your collarbone? Yeah, I think I broke my collarbone. Press right here. No, it's crunchy. Like, press right here. I can't move it. No, no, hold, don't touch I'm gonna, it. I'm, can I move your shirt back? Hold on. I'm really disappointed in myself. I used to be able to do that, like, no sweat. As you get older, your mind goes, oh, I can totally do that. And your body goes, nope. Nope, you can't do that. Dude, this is the, oh my god, I'm so pissed at myself. I, I'm gonna go to the ER because I can't move my arm. I felt the crack when I landed. My sister broke her collarbone going over the handlebars of her bike the same way you went over that table. Like now the adrenaline's wearing off, I can feel the pain coming in and I know that I've broken something because I cannot move my right hand. You say make a sling, take a big piece of fabric, fold it this way, and then you go like this and you tie this together. This is the best I could do. Dude, it's all about jerry rigging it though, it's cooler that way. <laughs> he, needs walk, he needs to walk. You can wear it like this. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you break your shoulder? I just jumped over a table full of guns. <laughs> hey, that's gonna make a good video at least. Subscribe. Yes. Hey. Hey, Steve. We're going to the hospital. Yes. Hey, dude broke his collarbone. Don't ask how. <laughs> <laughs> I broke mine before and it hurt a lot more than he's displaying right now. Oh, it hurts. Oh, I'm yeah. Adrian told him he's at a 7.5. I'm just pretending it's not hurting. <laughs> I mean, I cried like a little baby. I just, like, it hurt. <laughs> yeah. In fact, look, look at this. This is as far as my hand could go right here. I used to see that. I used to be able to touch this and do this. See, it's great, it's great. <laughs> prognosis sounds amazing. Dude, I mean, the the smoke simulator inside of me loves the specific like actual tendrils and wisps of the smoke that you see. One of the ways that I like to think of when I'm framing up a shot is adding layers and making a shot look like it's popping out at you. And there's there's depth. Like depth is something that's very important. One technique we use literally, adding fog throughout our scene. It just gives us a little bit more atmosphere and it helps carry the light and it just makes things look a lot more cinematic. You can see how they, they kind of have more of a cinematic feel and I feel like the fog is what really helps sell that. Beautiful light shafts and whatnot. There was that, we did a video a couple years ago, uh, Meme Police. We flooded the entire studio with fog specifically so we can have some laser pointers and actually have like some lines to draw through the fog. Anytime you have a laser pointer, you have to have fog. Yeah. Like you can't just use a laser pointer without fog. We're gonna try to replicate what we captured when we're shooting tactical reloads, only instead of using a red cam, we're using a ADD. The cameras are obviously different, but can we match the lighting? We are gonna try to replicate two shots. One shot is of our actress Gemma, and the other shot is of Freddy. And today we're using two aperture lights. We're using the 120D, which is a single source light, and we're using the light storms. First shot we're gonna do is of Freddy. This is when Freddy was interacting with Nico and he was doing a, I think a takedown of his gun. We have a edge light kicking the back of his hair, which is gonna give us some nice background separation. And then we're gonna have our fill, which is some CPO coming in from the right hand side. And then we have this, which 
which is just gonna overall just boost our exposure if we're just kicking this right up into the ceiling. It's kind of mimicking what these fluorescents are doing just to kind of give us a little bit more of a lift and exposure in this entire room. Fog. Fog helps so much. If you look at the shots that we're using right now, you can see like certain areas bloom in a way, in a very beautiful and smooth way. To get that look, you use fog. And that's something that I feel a lot of people, especially like students, when you're first starting out, you kind of neglect or forget to use. You should definitely try it. The second shot we're doing is we're gonna be replicating the look of our female lead. Ren, you are gonna be playing the female lead. Thank you. So the floor plan is very simple. All we wanted to do was create a nice cast of light behind her, give her a nice halo around her head. Fog definitely helped create that bloom, which was something that we were talking about earlier. We have a 120D kicking up near the ceiling, giving us a little bit more of an exposure gain. And then our camera is placed right over here. And the 120D is directly behind her, just bouncing at the back of her head, creating a beautiful hair-like kind of backlight. And then we got a little bit of fill coming in from our door, which is a natural light. And you can see in her eyes, this is what you would call a catch light. Her eyes are catching a little bit of that door. 42 millimeter. That looks identical yeah, almost. It's really close, yeah. Using a combination of the single source and our talent, I think it's safe to say that you can create a very film-like image, kind of like what we use with the Helium camera. Let's make the sequel, frame by frame. <laughs> frame by frame. What's up, Dave Brand? Hey, buddy. What's up? How are you feeling? Not good. I mean, if it wasn't for these painkillers, which I'm not advocating drug use, but man, <laughs> They're helping me out right now. <laughs> I broke my collarbone. It's official, dude. Yeah, look at this. It's like, oh, dude. Oh, dude. It's, it, it's yeah, straight it, yellow. it's straight yellow. It used to be black and blue. Now it turned yellow. Okay, so I don't know if I have to get surgery just yet. My doctor looked at me and he's like, "All right, you broke your bone in two places. This is one of the most difficult areas to not. I wouldn't say difficult areas to do surgery on, but they don't want to just jump right into you know worst case scenario just yet, which would be me having to do surgery on my clavicle. They're gonna wait two weeks and see how I start healing up before they jump to that conclusion or that decision. So fingers crossed, I don't have to because I have gotten surgery on my foot before. They drilled holes into my foot." and that was not fun. I was out for about a month. Well, how has this affected my daily life? Well, it's like I just lost my right arm effectively. I can't do anything really with this arm. I can't pick things up that are too heavy. I can still like use it, but I shouldn't. It's highly advised that I don't use this arm. So I've been using my left arm for everything and I am right-handed. If there is a silver lining to this story, I will become more adept using my left hand. I'm learning little tips and tricks right now. Like if you're editing and you only can use one hand, if you want to scrub through your timeline instead of moving the whole thing around you just hold the left mouse button down and just push with your thumb back and forth and as you can see you can you can scrub I think they said a total of like six six weeks six to seven weeks before I can actually like move this thing Sam what are you doing for lunch today man copying the flex power pro meal recipes Really? No joke. Sorry, I had a little cigar here. I'm working on graphics today, so I'm just like, you know, chewing on a little cigar thinking. Having a kid, the stress does it. Anyways, the point is is that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cut a couple pounds here. I'm gonna go on one of these keto diets, and it just so happens that they set along some keto meals that are ready to go, and they were so good that I ate all of them, and now I'm, I went to the grocery store, and I'm just replicating the actual meals. Really? Yeah. I've been having that every single day for lunch this week. It's called Flex Pro Meals. They come frozen. They have different kinds of meals that come and they're well balanced. They're healthy. And if you guys use the promo code SALMONNICO20, you get 20% off your first purchase. What is the keto diet? It's basically ultra, ultra low carb. It's called keto, K-E-T-O, because basically once you hit like uh, this like low carb threshold, your body goes into ketosis basically, which is actually like a weird biological starvation mode that starts burning off at that from your body. That doesn't healthy, man. I already lost five pounds. I just eat tons of meat and I, it's, it's great actually. It's literally the steak and scotch diet. I know that might not sound the best for your like blood pressure and all, so I try and mix it up with like some rum. <laughs> <laughs> I've even made this card. Oh, we're gonna go get Adrian a little get well soon gift because he really hurt himself, and if I were to hurt myself, I would want my friends to get me a get well soon gift, so. Golden rule. <laughs> get well soon, Car. <laughs> hey, listen, I wanna see if he can, it, not with, with his arm in a sling, if he can jump that. <laughs> yeah. Look what? at that. Look at that tag on the side of this building. Oh, right. dang. We're really going hard. People are tagging these buildings oh. every day. See this stuff? That's shit. 
So we made a video called Graffiti Graders where we acted like snobbish art critics. And we went around and graded the graffiti around Los Angeles because there's a lot of amazing murals out here. Like the bombs and tags that a lot of people just throw up that apparently there's some skill to it or something like that based on the comments in that video. They're garbage. They look, they are visual garbage. If you're gonna put a, a piece of art up in the public for people to look at, make it nice. So we offended a lot of people and I'm cool with that. Adrian breaking his clavicle just really reminded me of how vulnerable our mortal coils are on this planet. <laughs> we do a lot of rambunctious stuff in the studio and I'm just like, man, it's that easy. Just snap, there goes your bone. And I think it's just, you know, a good reminder that even if it's casual and it feels like it's a, you know, a vlog just being kind of made, you know, for fun on a channel, you still gotta be professional about things. If you're going to try to do something dangerous, you warm up to it, you put pads down. I was thinking about the stunts that we've done in some videos, like our uh, our first Far Cry video. There's an end scene where Eric Linden throws himself up and he hits a pole and spins and crashes through a table. It's a, it's a huge hit, it's, like, it's crazy. But they practice, they put up pads first, they put pads on the pole, he would jump, he'd bounce off the pads to get a sense of his momentum, can he clear it, where's he gonna land? And then little by little, they'd pull the stuff out until he could do the stunt. I think Adrian is a little embarrassed by hurting himself like that, which is completely understandable. I think he's in a lot of pain, which is, which also sucks, so. I hope he gets better. I think it was a great lesson for everybody in the office about how far to take things. From all of us at Corridor, we have a Get Well Soon card for you. Aw, dude. And I, I know you don't drink a bunch, but at least you can entertain your guests and maybe take the edge off your pain. <laughs> that will definitely be needed. Thank you, guys. Oh, my God. It's really uh, kind of you guys. How's the arm feeling? Horrible, man. It hurts so bad. But this made it feel a little bit better. Yeah, Thanks, dude. guys. I'm calling on all filmmakers for the Light This Location Film Festival hosted by our friends at Aperture. The rules are very simple. Create a film that takes place in one location. That's it. Easy. After you make your film, make a little behind the scenes showing how you're using lighting to tell your story and create your environment, create your vibe. Basically just fill us in on the artistry that you are putting in to the lighting of your video. And finally, create a top-down floor plan of your lighting setup. Submit your videos, we'll have a link in the description. And Corridor Digital, all of us here, will be some of the judges helping to pick out the winners. It's gonna be exciting stuff. Hope to see some cool entries and we will catch you guys later.